from my virtual mission here and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a group mission. Uh, so a group mission is a mission where there um, uh, is more than one participant on the mission. So typically this would be uh, a group of friends uh, who want to have a race um, from you know a start to a finish line um, or a company doing it as a wellness challenge um, for their office. Um, so we're just going to uh, jump right in here. Um, I'm going to click the start mission button. Now I'm going to do this as if I am a completely new uh, person to the platform. Uh, and so uh, right now we are on the start a mission page. On this page, um, this is where we create our mission. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to choose which type of mission we're going to, to create. Uh, now we've got a solo mission option, which is only for one person. So make sure uh, you, do, you don't choose that um, if you're trying to set up a group mission. And then we've got two group mission options here, um, which you can select from. So uh, it's really important that you get this right. However, if you don't get this right um, and you want to switch it, uh, you can just contact me and we can switch it over for you. Uh, so the first type of group mission that we have is called All for One. Now this means that there is only one marker on the map uh, and each time the um, anyone on the mission posts a distance then the marker will move from the start towards the finish so it's a collaborative effort um, it's more of a team team sort of effort uh, you um, get to cover a lot of distance uh, with a all for one mission because everyone's distances are being added together um, on the leaderboard for an all for one mission there will still be individuals or you can put people into teams um, and you'll still see a breakdown on the leaderboard but on the map there's only one marker the other type of mission we have is an each to complete mission uh, then th this means that there is going to be more than one marker on the map um, and you might have say 50 people um, and if they are registered as individuals on this uh, on the mission then they will each be tasked with completing the entire mission from the start to the finish and so it's more like a race so there's going to be lots of markers on the map and they're going to move every uh, any time anyone posts a distance um, with an each to complete mission you can also have teams so you might have teams of five teams of ten uh, teams of however many you want um, and uh, the team will be shown on the map as a marker um, and then each team will be racing uh, each other so important to get right um, and you can read more about them by expanding these read more functions so the next part, once we've chosen what type of mission we're going to do, and for the sake of this video, I'm going to choose an each complete mission type. If we scroll down, we get to the planning map. Um, now this map um, is where you plan the pathway you want to take for your mission. Uh, it can be anywhere in the world. Um, you can just start um, wherever you want. Um, so I'm just going to pick a, a random location um, somewhere in the US. Um, and let's say we want to start uh, here, how's this? Uh, we'll start in Denver. And so I'm just gonna click a really random start point now. And if I click my uh, mouse there, it's going to lay a point, uh, point A, as you'll see. Um, and uh, that is now going to be my start point. So um, it's important if you really want to have a very specific start point that you zoom right in and you go right to the very spot that you want to start. Um, if I didn't want to start there, I would click the undo button up top here, uh, and I might uh, then decide I want to start somewhere else. Um, for example, I might want to start here, uh, someone tequila and tacos, that sounds good to me. Um, so we will start at that point there. Um, and now I have put my first point on the map. So as I zoom out, uh, I can now start to build my pathway uh, for my mission um, however I want. So, um, excuse me, just got an alarm. Uh, so, what I need to do is I need to click other points along the map. So, let's say I want to go through Kansas City. I can zoom in. Again, I should zoom into maybe an exact place I want to go to. Um, but for the sake of this uh, video, I'll just make it quick. And so, what's happened now is I've placed another marker on the map, point B and it has drawn a line along the roads between those two points. Now it will draw a line between the two points. Uh, it will take the fastest road um, possible um, to get there. Uh, if you want to go on a really particular pathway, you need to just build, uh, build it out um, by putting more points on the map. Um, so, uh, so there we go. We can create as many points as we want um, to uh, as we build our mission. We can go wherever we like. Um, if you're doing a tour of your company's offices, uh, if you want to go through uh, famous landmarks um, around uh, the country or around the world, um, that that is totally fine. 
what you'll see up here, every time I click a point, um, the distance gets uh, increased. So if I click down here, you'll see that the distance is now 1,450.3 miles, and that is the distance between the first point uh, on my map and the last point on my map. Um, I can toggle between miles and kilometers um, if, if, uh, if you like. Um, and now uh, if I want to not follow roads and I want to go in straight lines, I can turn snap to roads off and wherever I, I click on the map is going to draw a straight line between those points. So uh, as you build your mission, you may want to have some snap to roads uh, on and you might want to have straight lines. Um, if you get to a place where you need to cross uh, the water, uh, it is advisable to go in straight lines because uh, if not, it will try and find the nearest ferry crossing and um, try and send you across the ferry, uh, which might be uh, a long way away. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you make a mistake, you can use the undo um, button as many times as you like. Uh, and if you want to just start again, you can use the reset button. Although if you click that once, it will wipe everything and you won't be able to get it back. Um, so just be careful up there. Um, another feature here is that you can snap to trails. And I'm not sure if we're close to any trails on this map. But if there was, say, a walking trail and you wanted to uh, go along the walking trail, um, you can put uh, the travel mode to roads, uh, make sure snap to roads is on, um, and now it'll be snapping to the trail. So you need to try and find the trail and, and you can follow trails like, like that. Um, what else is there on the map? Yep, you can uh, you know change views to satellite view and map view just as you normally would with Google Maps. Um, and things like that. Uh, you can zoom uh, around with your plus and minus keys or with your mouse scroll wheel uh, or with these keys over here. Um, it is worth spending a bit of time uh, on the map, although you can edit the map at any point um, before you launch the mission or even during the mission if you want to. So um, it's not uh, super important to get it exactly how you want it, um, although um, it is important to remember that uh, you can only undo points um, along the, the pathway. So if you make a mistake at the start point and you want to change it later, and then you're going to have to undo all of those points to get back to the start. Um, but it's pretty simple, um, and like I said, you can definitely uh, you can definitely um, edit the mission uh, whenever you want to during the mission. So the next stage, once we're happy with our mission, and let's say that this is what we wanted to do. Um, is that you can uh, scroll down, you need to select a time zone. Um, I can't, uh, close enough to Auckland. Um, and once you have done that, we're going to get down to the planning tools. Now this area here is going to tell you um, a few things about your mission in terms of how long it's going to take. Uh, so what we've got here is uh, we've got the, the mission uh, distance in miles. Um, and if we have a set time frame that we want to do this in, um, keeping in mind that this is just going to be the total time and the and the uh, and the distance. Um, so if we set it to say the thirty uh, first of May, um, it's going to be eighteen point eight miles per day um, to reach uh, the end there. It's going to give you some basic information about the. Um, how many days from today, how many weeks from today. Uh, you can come in and edit all this again uh, if you want to, and it will just adjust the time frame of the mission. Uh, so once we've done that, we can go down to enter some um, mission details. Um, so just call it test mission, um, my test mission. You can fill this out, obviously, however you want. Uh, the name of your group, which could be um, your organization, um, and the origin, so if you've got a, um, a start point, um, you know, well, I can't remember where we started, A and B, but you might put in the city locations or your office locations or, or anything really in your start points. It doesn't really matter um, what your mission origin destinations are. You can put anything in there. It's not cross-referenced uh, with your map. Um, step six is about public or private missions. So uh, you can uh, have a, um, uh, a, this setting here is, um, is more about whether the mission can be found easily. Um, so if you keep it um, private, well, all that means is that it won't be displayed on our front page of our website. So anyone with the link to the mission can still find it. Um, it doesn't mean they can join the mission, it just means that they can find it. Um, so uh, yeah, you can toggle between public uh, or private visibility. Um, and then here, really important, um, are you ready to launch your mission? And, uh, and 
generally speaking, people who are setting up group missions are setting them up with a launch date in mind, so a future launch date. Um, so it's important here to put manually start mission later, uh, and that will mean that you can set the mission up uh, create your group profile, onboard your participants, and do all of that without the mission actually uh, having started. Um, so uh, I advise you to do manually start mission later. Um, if you want to start the mission straight away, as um, soon as you've finished the setup, then you can click I'm ready now. Uh, we have a fundraising component here. I'm just going to um, ignore that for now. We're going to put maybe later, and then we're going to click uh, let's get it on, and um, we're going to wait until the mission loads. So sometimes it can take a long time, especially with Snap to Roads missions. It can it can be a really um, long process. So just be patient there. Um, okay, so now we're going to set up our group profile. So um, we have a um, a group name, which is what we put in at the start. Um, we need to choose a group image. So I'm just going to choose a file. Um, we'll do something like um, well, no one of our users holding a medal. First thing that came up um, about the group. So we'll put info here. Um, you might put an introduction to your group, um, what you're doing, uh, why you're here, uh, and then we click update group. Okay, now it's going to want um, us to um, sign up or log in. Um, so uh, I'll just set up a new user here. Uh, test. Okay, standard terms and conditions. I'm going to click sign up. Okay, um, so we're almost there. We just need to do some final, uh, final steps here. Um, just selecting some information uh, about uh, how you heard about my virtual mission. Um, you might receive, a, you'll receive a welcome message from me, uh, and we'll set an age group and uh, why you're here. So this is just that's just basic demographic information, um, and now you have arrived at your. Um, your mission page. So this is your own mission page that you've just set up. There's our pathway with our start flags and our finish flags. Um, you'll see that there is a notice here to say that the mission has not yet been launched. Um, so uh, you don't need to panic. Um, uh, the uh, mission is not underway yet. Um, you've just created it. Uh, if you want to launch the mission, you would click this button here and then it would ask you to confirm um, that you want to launch the mission and you would need to click yes. As soon as you click yes, the mission uh, has started and it can't be stopped. So um, be sure uh, that you want to start it at the right time. So I'm just going to X out of here. Um, as you can see, there's all the details that we set up. If you want to change the picture, you can you can click to modify it. Um, and um, we'll just take a look down at what the mission page is all about now. So this is your mission, um, your mission distance. Uh, so the mission is 920.4 miles. Um, and the time frame that was 48 days. Um, when the mission is started, uh, this, these will tick up um, as time goes by and as distance um, is accumulated, um, that will, uh, that will uh, increase. Um, so down the page, we've got the map, and when people post distances, they will advance along the map. Um, if it's uh, each to complete, which it is, um, then people's markers will go down the map. Uh, if it's an all for one, then only one marker will go uh, towards from the start towards the finish. Um, here we've got some um, basic uh, virtual weather information based on wherever the marker happens to be. Um, we can post a comment here to the mission. Um, we can also send this comment to everyone uh, via email um, who is on the mission. So this can be a good way of keeping people um, notified as to what uh, what you know what's happening, what's going on. Uh, and over this side, this is your news feed. So this is where you'll see a log of everything that's happening on the mission. Um, so. We've also got a leaderboard, um, and this leaderboard will show people um, and teams and where they're ranked. It's, it's really highly customizable. Um, you can use uh, activity type filters. Um, you can set it to weekly, monthly, or, or all time. You can show everyone or just individuals or teams. So there's a lot of functionality here that you can uh, explore and have a play with. Um, the other tab that's worth having a look at is the admin tab. And so this is where you, as the mission administrator, can uh, administer the mission uh, however you want. So here we've got a raw data export. So if you want to download the CSV file um, of all the data um, from the mission, you can do that by clicking that button. Um, 
you can manage your exercise types. Uh, so this is where you can set what types of exercises you are accepting onto the mission. For example, you might not want to accept cycling distances on, on this particular mission. Um, you might only want to accept walking and running distances. So you can set the parameters as to what types of distances people can post to this mission, which can be really handy. Um, here you can invite people to join, um, so if you click that button it will bring up a message, uh, you can fill in people's email addresses uh, and then it's, it's going to give them, it's going to send them this message which you can uh, change as well. Uh, if you click send then it will send the emails to those people um, or you can just uh, copy the link um, to your mission page which is this one here um, or it will be in your address bar on your, um, on your browser and you can get people to join um, by doing that, but I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. Um, here we have the auto join function. Uh, now this is a really important area as well. Uh, so uh, if you want people to automatically join the mission without you having to uh, manually approve them, um, you should click uh, enable auto join. Uh, you should probably also set a passcode. Um, so you should give them a, you know, not too cryptic um, passcode. Um, something that um, is easy for people to probably remember, um, but this code will be um, something that um, uh, you know, I mean, don't use that. But um, but this code will mean that anyone who has the code can automatically join the mission. Um, so that's a really nice way to uh, cut down your administration overhead um, by uh, not having to manually manually approve everyone. Right, okay, so here we have um, the existing participants and currently the only person on this um, mission is uh, myself. Um, but um, what we can do if we want to create teams, uh, and remember you can have teams for both each to complete and all for one mission, uh, we click uh, add new team, uh, we give it a name, we choose a picture, uh, and then that will create the team. Um, all your teams will appear in this area and you can move people uh, in and out of teams um, by using the drop down next to their name. It's re all really easy, um, this part, so uh, I'm sure you'll find that uh, fine. Um, okay, I think that's, uh, that's, that is pretty much it. Um, I'll just give you a really quick um, overview on how people join this mission. So uh, when you send people to your, your mission to join it, um, you're sending them the link to the mission page, which is going to be in your browser, which is just a little bit off screen, but it's up there. Um, and you send them to this page and then they need to come and they need, there'll be a button here um, similar to this one and it will say join. Um, if the person has joined, which I, I have, it will say joined, um, but if a person has not joined, it will say join and it will ask them to uh, to sign up. So I might show you a video of that a bit later. Um, so yeah, here, that's how to set up a group mission um, and a little bit of, look, a bit of a look around as to what uh, a group mission looks like. Uh, and I hope that uh, you found that very helpful. If uh, you need um, have any questions around that, you can get us via our support desk, which is just a little bit off screen here, um, or by emailing me um, directly. Uh, so yeah, I hope you found that useful, and thanks for watching.